Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I have made another video about this person actually having a mental breakdown before. This particular person was in this person's car um, and this person claims to be non-binary and trans at the same time. So obviously YouTube does you know what to me because apparently I'm not allowed to say the truth because the truth is going to set this person free ultimately because this person is having yet another breakdown but I can't say the actual truth to the person because the truth is seen as seen as being a hateful derogatory thing somehow. I don't know how that works. Don't ask me how it works because I've got no idea and I won't be able to explain it to you. But nevertheless, I really do feel for people that have been lied to and the utter delusional reality that the world is going through at the moment where good is now evil and evil is now good. And the result is people having severe mental breakdowns because they've believed in a false reality. They've put their whole entire worth into something that doesn't actually make any sense whatsoever. If you claim that you are something that you're actually biologically not, and that is everything you place your worth into, it's like a false flaw. It just, you can't have a solid foundation at all and move forward in life with any of that whatsoever. It's not going to work. And you're starting to see more and more people like this individual, this biological woman having more mental breakdowns because, well, this person is starting to realize that, Hey, uh, I don't know what I've got left anymore. The, this person's life is falling apart literally right before this person's very eyes. And well, let me just be honest with you. This person has got nothing. This is what the lie of the radical left will do to people. It will consume them in an ever-consuming fire. You go from looking like a, a particular person before, and then once that lie sets in, it really destroys you from, from within. It tells you that you shouldn't accept who you are, that you've been given biologically all these wonderful, healthy things. You've got to remove it all. So you go from being this really beautiful woman to then chopping off your healthy breasts to then changing your entire persona to then changing your entire thoughts. And it's like a cancer. It eats away at you for a, it's like a slow drip as well. Like slowly, but surely it'll eat and eat itself away until, well, you end up like this poor, poor individual that is just a mess. This individual was crying in, well, um, their car not that long ago saying that they have nothing left. They've got nothing, nowhere to go. And well, this person seems to be back. So have a watch of this one minute. I sh had to shorten it because, well, it does repeat itself. Uh, well, let me just say this person does repeat this person's self quite often. So you need to, I wanted to shorten it and give you a more condensed version instead of the four minute long spiel that, that this person seems to give. So have a watch. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I have no answers. They're kicking me out of my hotel room because I asked them to wear an N95 mask. And they said that if I wanted that, I was at the wrong hotel and I had an hour to leave. Where do I don't know where to go. I, I'm, I'm almost out of money. I keep, more scans just keep getting added to the docket. I don't even have one fully functioning arm at this point. Where do I, my mom isn't answering the phone. It's not like we were strange. I literally, because she was super abusive, but I, and I still want my mom, but I don't know what to do. Where do I go? What do I do? My doctor just called me to do an anxiety and depression exam. And like this person actually later on in the video admits that, well, they've been wrong on many, many occasions, but the hotel that this person is staying at wants this person to leave because this person happened to ask the staff if they could wear an N95 mask. Let me just be very clear. If you're asking a hotel staff member to wear a mask and they don't want to wear a mask, it is not up to you to tell them to wear a mask. 
that should be quite evident. We don't live in the COVID-19 period anymore. Thank God for that because it was an absolutely outrageous and insane period of time. But nevertheless, you should not go around asking people, hey, can you wear a mask? Because you are afraid of something that doesn't really affect you in the slightest. You are, you well, you're a young person, so you've got nothing to really be concerned about or worried about. But anyway, if you get the flu, you get the flu. That's just the way it is nowadays. I think you'll be, you'll be fine. But what do I do is the main question. Well, here's one thing. You've got to really have a deep look at all the stuff that you've believed in and realize wholeheartedly that all that stuff is just utter garbage and utter nonsense and is contributing to the state that you're in currently, the mental health crisis that you're in. Secondly, you need to ask Christ to come into your heart and into your life and to save you from your sin because evidently nothing else you are doing seems to work. And I think God is knocking at your heart and some people have to reach rock bottom before they start to realize that, hey, there is something missing in my life and that something is actually Jesus. And once they get Jesus into their heart and into their life, their life becomes a lot better. They have a lot more peace and a lot more tranquility uh, flowing through. As a result of that, they start to really radically transform their life in the best possible way. But unfortunately, the radical left goes, you don't need Jesus, you need yourself. You need to love yourself more than something else. You need to love yourself always. If you love yourself the most, then evidently you are going to be the best version of you possible. I don't know how that actually works. Don't ask me how to explain it to you all because I really don't know because it doesn't actually work. And we're starting to see the the uh, effects of people saying that you must love yourself the most. You treating yourself like a god is just not a very good idea at all. Because if you treat yourself like a god, what did God actually say? Have no other gods before me. Jeez, that is like a brilliant statement to make because you're starting to see the repercussions of when people have false gods and false idols and they worship them rather than the one that should be worshipped. There's a big difference, right? When you decide to worship the one that should be worshipped rather than the one that you claim you need to worship, which is yourself, and, well, you end up with a great deal of... uh, issues as a result. So Buck Angel, my friend, says the non-binary queer trans having a nervous breakdown, the same one who urged the trans community to kick me to the curb because I am transphobic, toxic, and self-hating, which Buck, my friend, you're the furthest thing from that. Love you, my friend. A harm to the community. Well, I do not think her breakdown is funny. I just want to point out the who the trans community thinks is a good representation of trans trans community is falling apart at the seams. You cannot build your house on a false foundation and not expect it to crumble, which is actually a biblical term. I don't know if you knew that, Buck, but well done for uh, setting me up for that. <laughs> it's like the the wise man builds his house upon the rock and the foolish man builds his house upon the what? The sand. If you're not building your life on something that is concrete, that is sound, that makes sense, that is actually the truth, then What's going to happen as a result is it's going to fall apart. It's going to crumble. And that's what is happening to this poor individual. And I think we should be compassionate and we should be kind, even though some people uh, like they attack and, you know, it's like it is sad to see when that person hits rock bottom. And the only person that can really help themselves in that situation at rock bottom is themselves. They can listen to the advice that we are giving them here Come towards the truth. It is the best thing for you. Once you realize the truth is going to be ever present in your own life and it's going to actually bring you a lot of joy and fulfillment, then hopefully they listen. But if they don't, it's on them. We can only do whatever we can try to do to help. Anyway, Sav goes, okay, I got bored and did a semi-deep dive, as you do. She's currently homeless and living in Asheville, uh, the perfect place for her, honestly. She has autism, ADHD, and no health insurance, but she's got three cats. She's been able to stay in hotels up until the crying video, but now she's got nowhere to go and no source of income because her job was selling some kind of art thing from her former apartment. So you need to check herself into a facility and get mental recalibrated. 
And I mean, that is the most compassionate way possible. I just learned she's autistic and now it all makes sense. Whoever prescribed the testosterone needs to find the nearest playground and slide down to hell. She's mentally unstable and she's spiraling. I'm a prey for her. And I'm with Sav and everybody else at the moment because anyone that has ADHD, autism, and they're being prescribed testosterone and they're biologically a woman, she also had her breasts removed too. Like that's not something that anyone should ever have to go through, let alone a person with ADHD and autism, for goodness sake. Like that is just absolutely cruel. Hope in Christ says, unfortunately, people with autism are a large part of that has been captured and abused by gender ideology. Indeed, they're very right and very accurate about that. If anything, a mental health provider or at least 98% of them will only affirm and make the situation worse. She might need some sort of short-term stabilization, but really she might need a case of, of um, uh, a manager to connect her to insurance, a good support team, rare to find, and ultimately she will need Jesus. Pray indeed. Um, so here's more people. When I first saw the second video, I saw someone deeply wounded and broken. It's really clear these hormones and surgeries are not helping people by destroying them not just the hormones and surgeries. It's just like the whole lie that you can be something that you're actually not. That is confusing as all heck. And if it's anything, that is what the devil is good at. The devil is good at deceiving and lying and leading you on the path to ultimate destruction. So come to the light, come to things that actually make sense and things that are healthy for you. Prisha, who also has a, a detransitioner story, Thank you for being kind. Doctors are allowing her to consent and helping her to believe that this was all caused by being born in the wrong body and transphobia. Believe it or not, those are like ridiculous things. If uh, they're untrue things, if you ask me, that they use to try and force you to take these drugs, but they'll convince you that you're taking them on your own accord. But really they're the ones that are emotionally blackmailing you. You're giving them everything that they need to actually prescribe these drugs to them or to you, sorry. And the stakes are transition or die by your own hands because gender affirming care is life saving care, which we know it is not. So I really do hope this person actually gets the help that she needs. Like it is once again, really sad to see someone have a mental breakdown like this that has been in, in the public eye for quite some time and spouting a lot of nonsense, but that nonsense is really just, breaking down um, this person's life at the moment. So sending prayers, hopefully she listens and hopefully, well, she gets the help that she needs for the better. Anyway, my friends, you take care, you be blessed, and I'll see you all in the next video.